remember our last DIY we did and it was disgusting? I can't. I don't do intros, so you know I'm only doing one because if you don't know who is next to me, it's Mr. Drew Scott of Lone Fox. Oh. And I'm in Rachel Metz's crafting studio, workspace, work, no, it's like a woodworking studio. <laughs> it's like woodworking. Workshop. Workshop. That's the word. That's the one word. <laughs> If you guys do not know who Drew is, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but please go check out his channel before you even watch this. We also filmed a video. Yeah, we did. We filmed and made an entire shelving unit for my wall in my new apartment, and it looks amazing. We created this like it's IKEA so piece. But we also filmed two more videos here we, for my channel yeah. were, that were a complete fail. And we time. spent full days on each, and after the project, we're just like, what did we just create? <laughs> Wait, if, I don't think it's turned on. It is. Are you sure? Yeah. I get so scared every time. Oh wow. I made two pieces of wood. <laughs> Can I cut some miter saw? Yeah, but just be careful. Just watch your fingers. I'll try. So I'll be over there really cutting down the wood. Oh. Okay. So our projects just each time did not turn out. It just weren't feel like we could present it yeah, to you guys and like feel serious. Fulfilling. Yeah. Like they, they were just like mediocre kind of. So we're like, let's actually create a fulfilling video, and that is what we're doing today for you. Drew found, I think it's like priced at 180 bucks. It's a wood wardrobe like rack. clothing rack I from Urban exactly. Outfitters. Yes. And the Urban Outfitters one is actually fully wood, but we're gonna add like a macrame sort of shelf element to the bottom. So it's kind of like an upcycled, recreated handmade Urban Outfitters inspired for a cheaper price point project for you today and I think you're going to love it. So this project is actually super easy. You're gonna only need two tools and it's only a couple of steps. Yeah, it's going to look amazing because we're actually creating it right now. And I'm so. staring at it not being built. Yeah, we just we'll gotta put it together. Just, let's just get started. For this entire build, all you will need lumber-wise is a dowel. The length and thickness is totally up to you. And then six of these two by ones. Again, you can upgrade to the select pine board like I have here since Drew and I wanted a chicer look, or you can get the two dollar boards. It's totally your call. For the shelf itself, you want to go ahead and measure the width that you want. Our width we were going for for the space is going to fit in was 24 inches. Inches. Take that and add the width of the lumber that you're using twice. For us, that will be 25 and a half. I will explain more of that later when we assemble the shelf. And then you want to cut out two pieces the same length to be the depth, which for us was 14. So those are all the cuts that you're actually gonna be making. You're going to have four smaller pieces making up your shelf. The measurements of ours are in the description box below. Four legs, which ours ended up being six foot, and then also a dowel to hang your clothing on. And then we also wanted to make sure to round the ends of all of the legs for this clothing rack. So we found this little rounded item here and we're actually going as close as possible using a pencil just to round out all the ends and draw it on there. And then we're using a bench sander to mainly take off the largest chunk of wood to create this rounded section. So just going in using the bench sander to really sand that down as shown here. But you can also use something like a jigsaw or a multi-tool, whatever you want to personally use to round out the edges of this. Uh, we just went in with the bench sander. Then we went in right now with the orbital sander to really give it like a second good sanding to make sure that it was really good and nice and fresh. And this was also clamped down on Rachel's work surface while we did this to really like just get them all done at the same time. Grab two of those one by twos and lay them out on your table and stack them as if you are going to be creating the actual quote unquote leg of one side of the wardrobe rack. Since the shelf is not assembled yet, I just grabbed my measuring tape and just pulled apart those pieces of wood until it was the depth of the shelf that we are going to be creating. I traced where the two pieces of wood met towards the top and then grabbed my dowel and kind of centered it in between one of the pieces and traced it all for a guideline to know how to put it back together to ensure I'm getting it right. I drilled out the holes with a Forstner drill bit that was a little bit smaller than my dowel just to make sure I wasn't taking away too much wood and I could kind of control if I was going to mess up. I laid that cutout piece back on top of the piece that we traced to make sure that it fit nice and then traced that circle onto that and repeated the process to make sure our dowel can go straight through. When you double check that that works, you just copy and paste essentially with your pencil onto the other set of legs. The legs are handled, so let's go ahead and assemble the shelf. You can glue this together and screw it from the outside if you don't have a pocket hole jig, but I like the pocket hole jig since I'm not like a professional woodworker all the way yet. It just gives a more secure hold, but hiding the screws as well. 
Make sure when you are screwing into the 25 and a half inch piece, you don't screw all the way to the edge. You want to make sure you're leaving that thickness of the piece of wood that we compensated for earlier on each side. Once everything is put together, it will make sense, but you need that excess to make sure that the wardrobe rack itself is straight and it doesn't kind of like go in towards the back or towards the front since you need that extra space since the pieces on the outside are staggered. And we wanted to go in and just give this wood a nice light finish. So we went in with the Danish oil in the natural color. And this is great because basically it's just going to seal and kind of protect the wood. But at the same time, it's really going to make the natural grain of the wood pop, but keep that light, like natural tone, which is very similar and reminiscent of the Urban Outfitters one. But guys, we are now rolling into the macrame portion. And I love this part. Well, it's not really macrame. It's kind of like weaving. And I found this five millimeter macrame cord on Amazon, which will be linked in the description box. But this is like a weaving back basket weaving, sort of, I don't even know. We're just gonna show you guys what to do. So basically I started by using a staple gun to staple this down on the bottom side of the shelf. And what I'm doing is I'm actually going to create 17 full wraparounds of this macrame cord. So this part is pretty easy. And like, if you just watch, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you guys have seen my channel, you know I love using that term. So I'm going around and I'm wrapping this 17 full times on the left side and on the right side. So it's just gonna be pretty repetitive from here on out. Another thing that I actually did was every now and then I would actually go in after wrapping it a couple times, use a staple gun as shown here and just staple in a little like plus sign or cross shape just to make sure that this stranding or this cording that we're doing stays super, super tight as you're going along. So then I wrap 17 sections around one side. I'm also going to go in on the opposite side and just repeat exactly what we did identical as the first side and just wrap around 17 more times because these are going to be a little bit of a structural element to this shelf to make sure that it's super strong and very secure if you do want to add anything heavy to it. So just repeat and do 17 wraparounds. So now comes the over and under portion, which is very repetitive and extremely self-explanatory if you see what I'm doing on the screen. So basically I stapled my cording down on the back side and you are going up through the bottom, wrapping around and up through the center. It's literally an over, Drew, go under, go under, under, as you can see here, pass your little bobbin through and then over and under. And it's literally this like, same process until you reach the end. And keep note that I did actually start this out about two inches from the edge, just because I feel like having these gap openings makes it look a little bit more interesting as opposed to having it fully macrame all the way to the edge. But if you do like that look, you can definitely do that. This part is just super repetitive. And the thing that I also did was to make sure to staple it every about five to 10 rows, just to keep that tightness there. So on the back side, you can sort of staple it down after you've done five to 10 rows and just repeat this process going over and under. And this just adds such a nice visual detail. I love the way that this looks. I think it's so beautiful and pretty, and it also is very, very functional for the shelf. So once you reach the end, the spool's actually not gonna be able to fit through. So I actually just pulled off a big chunk of the macrame cording. Reaching the very end, I stapled it off, and this is your finished shelf. It looks amazing. This is so much better than the Urban Outfitters one. <laughs> Feel how stable. Come over and touch it really quick. Oh my oh, God. That wow. Is, that's fully You stable. pulled it super tight. Yeah, I did. This was definitely making it way more difficult than needed, but we held up this shelf to the legs, ensured it was level, marked where they were going to be, and then pre-drilled into the legs of the wardrobe rack to ensure that there was no splitting of the wood and basically just attached it with wood screws right into place. When we had one side assembled, we just slid in our dowel through all of the holes and clamped it into place just to give it a little bit of a rough, dry fit, if you will, to make sure we were screwing the other side into the right place. We did decide to cut down the dowel just a little bit and Drew had a really great idea to add texture to the top of this piece versus it all just kind of staying in the bottom towards the shelf by hot gluing and wrapping around some of the same macrame cord to the ends of the dowel. You can style up the clothing rack with some of your favorite pieces. You can change it from season to season, color palette, whatever you wanna do, or it's a great spot for your guests to really like store their suitcase underneath and then put their favorite pieces out to wear, of course. So this is our finished and completed clothing rack. 
it's really incredible how you can just add an extra touch with that macrame cord wrap around situation that Drew showed you. It just really ups the entire project. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to check out what we did over on Drew's channel, Lone Fox, and be sure to subscribe as well. I had so much fun collaborating with someone having another body in the workshop. I'm gonna force him to live with me. We'll catch you soon for another DIY. Bye, Bye guys. guys.